So you are planning a trip to Southeast Asia, whether it is Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam, Malaysia, Singapore, this general area. When is the right time to go? The best time, and you could say the high season is from near enough November to February, March time, maybe even April, where it can be quite hot during the day, but night time it can get to balmy kind of temperatures so you don't sweat when you go out for your evening meal or go to the local disco or karaoke bar. So in order to get the best deal, I would say you would book your ticket at least six months in advance. I would try to get a direct flight rather than a indirect flight, even though they are more expensive. Maybe you can go to skyscanner.net and search then make sure your travel agent is a reputable one like Expedia or going to the airline directly. The next thing you're going to do is book your hotels. Now, I would recommend booking.com because most of the time you can book a hotel and you book the t ticket. It's guaranteed by your credit card. And with that, you pay when you arrive at the hotel. So make sure you have enough money in your credit card before you go. and make sure your credit card is you can you're allowed to use it so calling up your credit card provider and saying i'm going to thailand cambodia malaysia between october sorry november all the way to january christmas time is high season even though christmas is not truly celebrated here it is a high season so the prices do go up a lot more so make sure you book these hotels well in advance i've stayed in thailand over christmas and i will book the hotel in may and june even before i booked the air ticket and then if i was on a travel trip then you got to match the hotels with the corresponding date so Planning this is sort of a bit of fun. Take your time over it, spend two or three weeks. Let's say you're going November next year. Then from May of that year, you start booking things and then make sure you do pay for your air ticket. Let's say in June, you're going to get a good bargain. But if you're not too sure about the dates, then maybe get a better ticket. Don't go for the cheapest one available and it has a flexible kind of policy there. Yeah. But if it's last minute, then just get the cheapest one available because 100% you know that you're going. Obviously, before you go, you need medical insurance. Now, there are lots of medical um, insurance websites. Can I help you with that? To be honest, not really. My insurance company is um, my insurance policy for, for overseas medical things is a really old one but it is actually still valid with that so there's many websites there from different countries just ask your friends whatever with that one but make sure you do have medical insurance so if you do have a motorbike accident you'll be sent to the hospital and maybe it would cover like 80 percent of the cost and the rest of it would be cash talking about money do bring cash now when you do, um, let's say you're going for four months, maybe you would need to bring something like 8,000 American dollars. Just example, it can be more, it can be less. Make sure that when you do leave your country, you notify customs that you're bringing $10,000 out of the country um, because they may think it's related to something else. And as long as everything's legitimate and you say you're going on holiday, da, 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 and even when you arrive in a different country and you have over 10,000 US, declare it. Yeah? They're not going to charge you anything. You can, there's no law stopping you allowed to bringing over that amount. You just got to tell that you are bringing that amount. Credit cards, yeah. Debit cards, yeah. All fine. Visa orientated, I would say, is the is going to be the best one for you. Let's take a break. Now, when you do arrive in that country and you're in the hotel, use the safety deposit box in your hotel and just bring the stuff that you need related to your money, to bring your um, your credit cards and also your passport. Anything that you don't need on that day, hey, leave it in the safe. So if you're just going to the beach for the day, 
Example, just take $30 with you in local currency. You don't need your passport, lock everything up. Do you need your phone? That's another thing. And um, perhaps bring two phones, get a cheaper phone. So if you lose it, hey, bam, you still have your main, main phone there. Just lock it up, you don't need to. When I go to Thailand, for example, I actually leave my phone in the hotel room and occasionally I'd bring it out if I know I'm going to do some photographs. And most of the time I'd bring a small camera, you can see it just there, which actually hangs on my chest on a magnet. So it's actually quite secure with that. So just bring the, the necessities. Your passport, make sure you have your visa, make sure you have enough days on your passport left. Make sure it's usually six months or over, anything less. Sometimes customs can be a little bit iffy with that one. And do take a photocopy, do take a picture of your passport that you can store in your phone in case you lose it, you have there, along with your visa as well. That's be one thing. I think I just need to answer a telephone call. I'll be back. Clothing is the next one. So when you're packing your suitcase, usually the amount that you can bring is about 20 kilos on the airport and about seven kilos on your hand luggage. Make sure that the liquid in your hand luggage is less than 100 mLs. People are still fussy over that nowadays. But when you pack your clothes, you don't need to bring a warm jumper. It's gonna be hot. T-shirts, shorts, maybe like one like party dress or one pair of nice trousers like jeans. Most of the time you're going to be wearing running shoes like Adidas and the next time you're going to be wear, wearing uh, slippers. Make sure they are comfortable. You don't need to bring any leather shoes. And think about it this way as well, that when you come back to your country after your vacation, you're going to have some souvenirs. So maybe for example if I go to Thailand for six days I will take maybe like 11 12 kilos in my suitcase that gives me another eight kilos and the summer airlines even more than that to bring back with some um, clothing which I bought or some gadgets etc etc so that's to bear in in mind and obviously the longer you stay you possibly would need more clothes. But hey, everything that you have in the UK or in America is going to be in Thailand, for example. So you can wash your clothes once a week um, in a laundry mat or the hotel can do it, or you can do it by yourself, or whatever like that. There is washing powder there. Medication that you need, make sure if you're under prescription that you have it for four months so you have the fertility for it. Make sure you have the receipt from the doctor in your um, document. So if immigration stops you and you have 400 painkillers, for example, then this is um, then the immigration can help you there with that respect. Yeah. So you have the evidence that you're allowed to bring that. Um, but all these medicines are available. Now in Thailand, for example, the pharmacists, they do go through training the same as in the UK or in America. But this is the whole thing with it, is that their training is all in English. So you can say you have this problem and they're like a doctor. They know the medicine to give you directly and then done and dusted. You can go to the big companies like Boots, for example. Boots from the UK is a big pharmaceutical brand, um, a chemist and lots of beauty things there. But there's some in Thailand and there you can go in and say, do you have this medicine? And if they don't, they can order it for you or you can try another pharmacy. Excuse me, there's plenty of choices. And when you're there, don't just go to the usual hangouts. Now, try to, obviously, if you go to Bangkok, you want to go to the Grand Palace where to see where the king and queen and dynasties and the empire, whatever it was, um, used to live. Now they don't live there anymore and you would have to pay a certain fee. Do all the research online for it before, like TripAdvisor. So if you're, you want to try some uh, Thai food, you want a good restaurant, that's not going to give you a little bit of an upset stomach, or as they call it in India, Delhi belly, then go to TripAdvisor and they will tell you the good restaurants to go to and possibly even give you the prices as well. 
a backup system that maybe that your wallet gets stolen and along with your credit cards and you don't have any money left, make sure you have the access to contact your bank and maybe a friend in the UK or in America who can send you money via Western Union or MoneyGram as long as you haven't, like me, been blocked on Western Union because they think I was doing monkey business before. Oh, just so annoying with Western Union. But if you're, then your parents could send you a thousand dollars to get out of danger. I was also mentioned that return air ticket. Make sure you do have that because sometimes in immigration they will ask. If you don't have it, then you've got to show that you are leaving that country. So if you are leaving by bus, maybe you book the online bus ticket beforehand. Again, there's a million websites. Just be careful when you are booking as well because there's lots of scams. Any injections that you need to take? Well, if you're going to spend a lot of the time in, in the jungle, for example, the Amazon rainforest, then you would need to, I think, take the yellow fever injection. You will feel poorly for a day. I had it years ago when I went up and down the Amazon um, river on a cruise ship. Um, and you do feel poorly for one day, then you get better the next day. If you're here in Asia, if you are in the jungle, then maybe some kind of malaria pills, etc. Uh, that can, so you're not going to get dengue fever or malaria, which is still around in these areas, even in Singapore, just do take care. Mosquito repellent, woo! Mosquitoes are a bugger here. And with that, they do itch, they do burn. Just when you do go to the, in the evening and the restaurant looks really nice, you may be bitten to death because you're just wearing shorts. Just wear some mosquito repellent. The smell is not the best in the world. Get one which is natural. Don't get one which is artificial. They're not very expensive here. And again, most pharmacies would sell this for maybe five to $10. The other thing with that as well is something that I've forgotten. So the medicine that you need to take, the injections that you need or the medicine. Again, everything that you have in America and in England, it is available. So if you forget something, it's not a big deal. But the day before you leave, make sure you have everything and double check it. Do you have your passport? Do you have your wallet? Do you have your ID? Do you have your earphones? Do you have your computer? Do you have your phone? Do you have your charges? Do you have your adapters? And the longer you spend preparing for it, the better it's going to be. Because if you forget anything, hey, in a short space, well, it's not going to be a big deal. You just have to buy another one. But if you have one already, then if you prepare well in advance, it's already there in your suitcase. So these are some top tips before you travel to your dream holiday in Thailand or in here, Cambodia, or maybe an adventure in Laos or Malaysia, or even in Singapore. Everyone is individual and everyone has their own choices. Everyone has a different budget. People can um, just want to go backpacking, then just, you pack the essentials. You don't need to overpack and do be aware of that luggage allowance as well at the airport. There is so much more to mention, but I'm just doing this literally off the cuff for those people who are interested in traveling into Southeast Asia. I've been here over 30 years, November 1993, I first came to Thailand and I was a little bit nervous, a little bit skeptical, and but everything was fine in the end. Did I forget one or two things? Yeah, no problem, because I could get it in the pharmacy or I could get it in the department store. It wasn't actually a really big deal. Thank you for your time. God bless to all. Bye-bye for now.